Hey windmill friends, it's Kevin from TexasWindmills.com. If you visited my shop, you know I love these old beautiful wooden windmills. This is part two of our ongoing series of wooden windmills. Now, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you for sending me some of the pictures of the historic wooden windmills in your area. Love to see those old pictures, so go out and find more. Now, take a look at this windmill. Pretty classic wooden windmill. It's got the individual blades or sails on it. Nice wooden tail. Looks a lot like our windmills that are made out of metal later on. And then there was these other photographs that some of you noticed and sent some questions on. What's the deal with this? This windmill is like it's broken or something? Is it folded up? What happened? Well, it's not broken. That's part of the neat part about these old wooden windmills. They were all trying to find a way to control the speed. And then someone else commented on this one. It's like, is the wheel broken and the tail fell off? No, the tail did not fall off of this. So join me. It's Texas windmill time for wooden windmills. I'll tell you about these different windmills. Let's get started. Let's start off talking about the homemade windmills. Now they're just generally made out of homemade material that you'll find available local. They don't yaw or they don't change directions north, south, east, west. They're pretty much fixed to the prevailing wind. The next category here is another homemade style windmill. Now this was used in the salt flats where they wanted to move water, brackish water, over to harvest the salt out of. So these windmills look sort of scary. I don't know how much I'd want to be around this thing in a big wind. Pretty interesting things, but homemade windmills, I well, we won't spend a lot of time on it. Let's go to the next category. Here's some interesting wooden blade windmills. Now if you look carefully here, it looks like somebody needs to throw a tail up on that windmill to control the directions. Look even closer, I'll do a little computer magic here, turn it into a negative. See the ropes coming down there? So they had two ropes sort of out in a V shape, and you'd stake it to the ground. You'd tie it, face it into the wind, and there she'd go. Now these windmills were pretty efficient. They worked pretty doggone well, but you had to be there to control them. They required someone there all the time, especially if the wind got too hard. Now these windmills were made out of redwood, so they had redwood blades or individual sails, they went to a center hub that had an overlay metal front and back and wedges in between. And this whole thing was just nailed together. Then it had a round board, a bent rim that went all the way around it in several pieces and overlapped. Pretty cool windmill. You'd see a lot of them out in California, but not very many anywhere else. Matter of fact, you'd only see them around Stockton, California which is actually called the city of windmills and travel brochures because there were so many windmills there. Shallow water, great growing climate, didn't need to lift the water more than 10 or 15 feet. But it didn't take them long to figure out, let's put a tail on this. Let's make this windmill self-regulating. Self-regulating is the key. Make it turn out of the wind. In the late 1880s, Charles Brush built this giant wind turbine for making electricity. Now, it's not really something we're going to delve into, but it's just sort of cool, this big giant wooden thing. Let's go to water pumping windmills that were made by manufacturers and sold throughout the United States. The best way to describe the two different kind of windmills are as a solid wheel or a sectional wheel. A sectional wheel folds over, so each section of the wind wheel has a hinge piece. A solid wheel is just that, a solid wheel, much like the windmill we do today. Now, a sectional windmill is more complicated, but in essence, a centrifugal force causes the wind wheel to roll each section over, slowing itself down. Then there's a series of levers and usually a counterbalance weight of some type to then engage the wind wheel to fold flat and start spinning again until another gust of wind causes it to fold over individual sections. They're pretty easy to recognize. Here you see a pretty typical section windmill with a tail vane. Now remember, if the windmill has a tail vane, it always faces into the wind, and the wind blows through it. Now, a couple of you sharp viewers notice that there was some with no tails. So these are vaneless sectional windmills, and they are always downwind, like a flag on a flagpole. As the wind blows through it, like this beautiful picture of a duplex windmill, the wind blows through, it's downwind. Let's take a look at our Dempster number 9, similar to the Eclipse windmill. 
so the wind's blowing through, that big tail vane is always keeping it facing into the wind. Now another sharp-eyed viewers, thank you so much, notice this little guy, a side vane. Well, let me explain what the side vane does. That side vane is going to face into the wind, and when a gust of wind hits it, it's going to give it a little shove and help it to roll the wind wheel out of the wind. Now remember, the big tail vane is going to hold it out of the wind, but that little side vane gets it started off. Then as the wind calms down, it folds back out, and it rolls back into the wind. This off-center principle, where the wind wheel rolls around the tower and turns out of the wind, works great. Be sure you check out our video. We have a great video that shows how a windmill controls its speed in much more detail. And as you watch these videos now, your frame rate, your internet speed, doesn't look like the wheel's turning that quick, but believe me, it's going. So my friend Jess up at Big Sky Windmills wanted to build a wooden blade and a wooden tail windmill using our gearbox in our system. To test his design, he loaded it on the trailer and took off down the country road, getting up to almost 50 miles an hour. Now look at that. So you see that tail vane into the wind, yet the wheel rolls out. As you slow down, it comes back into the wind, back and forth with the speed, doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's an amazing simple process that works so well with the modern windmill. Thanks for joining us at TexasWindmills.com. I'm Kevin and I really appreciate you all my windmill friends.